Night visual problems with intracoral lenses or night dysphotopsias. Is it really a big issue? How to avoid that? And is it possible to get rid of that if you are experiencing this type of problems? Hi there! My name is Alex and you are at iSurgery Explained channel. If you are planning a cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange, or if you have an eye well inside of your eye already, you might have heard or you may experienced so-called night dysphotopsias. Night dysphotopsias are unwanted visual images around light sources during the night. It might have a different shape or different intensity, but generally they are divided in three main types. There are so-called glare, halo or starburst. They are mainly associated with so-called presbyopia correcting lenses of any type, such as multifocal or EDUF type. However, it may happen even with the simplest monofocal eye well. But night dysphotopsias are not only associated with eye wells. Healthy patients with more or less healthy eyes also may experience in real life this kind of disturbances. These symptoms might be observed by patients with cataract or dry eye syndrome, or even with simple diffractive disorders like uh, hyperopia, myopia or astigmatism. As an example, I have a high hyperopia and astigmatism, and my wife has a moderate myopia. And if our vision is uncorrected or we don't use uh, glasses or contact lenses, we see some kind of disturbances around light sources during the night. For instance, I see a kind of starburst and my wife sees a kind of halos. So this kind of issues is not something unique to intraocular lenses. But we are talking about intraocular lenses, so let's come back to the topic. How often the patients with an IOL experience this type of disturbances? It is a good question. An answer is somewhere between 5 and 25%. Yes, it is a big range. So what is the reason of such uncertain results? The reason of such wide range of data is that it's absolutely a subjective question. And an answer of a patient depends on two factors. First one in patient personality and how the patient perceives these disturbances. And another important issue is a question type, or other words, how this question is formulated to the patient. Surgeons have noted that the way they ask a question gives absolutely different results in terms of numbers. For instance, if they ask a question, do you have any type of issues with your vision and are you satisfied with the lens? Majority of patients said, yes, it's everything fine. But if surgeon is asking directly related to night dysphotopsias, other words, do you have any type of problems with your night vision or uh, while you're driving, or do you see some circles or something around light sources? In this case, a so-called directed question gives larger amount of positive answers about night dysphotopsias. But it is only a subjective question. And in real world, we can judge is it really a big problem or not based on rate of explantation or IOL exchange. If a patient decides to change an intracoral lens with high level of night dysphotopsias to another one with uh, expected lower level. And data from real world say that amount of lenses explanted due to night dysphotopsias are absolutely, absolutely negligible. In majority of cases, patients are absolutely happy with the lens they selected. Almost any manufacturer gathers statistics about patient satisfaction. And all the published data of manufacturers say that majority of patients, I mean 95 or more percent, are absolutely happy with the lens. And if they need to implant the lens again, they will choose the same type of lens for next eye. As a word, night dysphotopsis are not a big issue with modern presbyopia correcting lenses. However, many years ago, with the first multifocal lenses, it really was an issue. In order to help you to better understand what you might expect with different IOL types, please have a look to a computer simulation of different halos and glare effects with different IOLs. Yes, it is a computer simulation, but it is created by real patients who really experience this type of uh, issues with their eyes. So the pictures I'm going to show you is gathered from real-world experience of real patients. So let's have a look. The first image here is simplest technis monofocal eye well. As you can see, it is absolutely clear image without any disturbances. The next image relates to technis eye hands. It is a new type of monofocal eye well with improved intermediate vision. You can see here that some settings have been changed. However, it is not affected the overall quality of image. And this image is Alcon Panoptics trifocal eye well. Here you can see a noticeable halo effect around light sources. Next image relates to Technis Symphony EDUF IOL. As you can see here, it gives different experience. It doesn't have halo, but it looks like more glare. And next image relates to new hybrid Technis Synergy IOL. As you can see, Technis Synergy dysphotopsias are not type of halo or glare, and it looks like a web or starburst. Well, I hope that these images help you to understand better what you might expect with different type of lenses. But be aware that uh, this is only simulation and different peoples might observe it in a different way. Because, they are, uh, because night dysphotopsis are mainly product of our brain and different people may have a different brain reaction to different type of optics. When we're talking about night dysphotopsis uh, with an eye well, 
What else we have to take into consideration? We have to think not only about appearance of these effects, we have to think about how bothersome they are for you. My experience of working with different surgeons show that even if a patient is not really happy with having these effects, they are not willing to exchange an IOL to a simple monofocal type for two reasons. First of all, as I already mentioned, even monofocal IOLs might have this type of issues, however, much rarely than with multifocal lenses. And another more important factor is that uh, patients really understand that this type of disturbances is not a big problem of IOL. It is, let's say, payment for the spectacles independence with presbyopia correcting lens. Because actually we have just two options. First one is monofocal lens, where you have only fixed distance, less dysphotopsias or less chance of dysphotopsias, but you have to wear uh, reading glasses or glasses for intermediate work if you need a high quality vision for reading or intermediate task. And another option you have a presbyopia correcting lens, which gives you spectacle independence, which gives you much better visual experience at near and intermediate and far distance, but you will have some issues with either loss of contrast or night dysphotopsias. There is no miracles and no free lunch in our life. I have already explained some physics how we do utilize light in modern intracore lenses. It was a video about VVT and Symphony EDUF lenses. You may check it in the link above and in the, in the description below. Please have a look to this video if you are interested to understand better why do we have this kind of compromises and why we have to choose one or another issues with the different IOL types. Actually, we don't know exactly what causes the dysphotopsias and we cannot predict what type of dysphotopsias will you have with this kind of lens or with your particular eyes. But there are some empirical rules will help us to understand why it might happen. And generally, it is related to eye irregularities with the cornea. It might be related to pupil size and pupil abnormalities. It might be related to IOL decentration. And the most often problem of night dysphotopsis comes from so-called refractive errors or refractive surprises after the IOL calculation and implantation. And major role in night dysphotopia formation plays our brain or visual cortex. It happens because our brain has to adapt to a natural way of pseudo-accommodation. I just want to remind you that in young healthy eye we have so-called accommodation mechanism, when our natural lens changes its shape to focus on the different distances. While with artificial intracoral lens we don't have the ability to change this focal lens or something to focus on different distances. Therefore we have to play with light and focus all the range of distances to your retina. And it is unnatural way of accommodation and your brain has to adapt. And in fact, your brain will neuroadapt to this kind of disturbances over time. Majority of patients experience lower intensity of halo, glare or starburst over time. And many patients even report they absolutely disappear. And I'm gonna give you a simple and really working advice how to make this process faster and make it simple for you. You simply should try to don't focus on your visual disturbances. Don't try to understand which type of light source gives you more or less this type of issues. Don't try to realize what's the form of this or something like that. If you will try not to focus on your halo, starburst or glare, it will give your brain a signal that this type of image is unwanted. You don't need this type of information. And your brain will try to remove the type of information from your visual path. If you have any questions about IOL selection or particular IOL model, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below and I will try to help you to understand the topic better to the best of my knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up Subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video. Bye.